you share the uh, IP sequence on Linux by everyone. No worries. Hello, everyone. Sorry about the technical thing. I always seem to have that with my computers for some reason. Um, this is a talk on um, I squared C on Linux. And a lot of people won't even know what I squared C is. And I didn't actually know till last year. Um, basically, uh, what I squared C is. There we go. Um, I squared C is an electrical system that was designed way back in the 1980s. And it was designed by Philips. And what it is is it's a synchronous data transfer protocol. So any of the old timers might have heard of um, RS-232 or RS-422. Well, um, I squared C is very similar to RS-422. And what that means is that you can put a lot of devices on the same two-wire data bus. Um, and everybody with a modern computer is actually using I squared C now, even if they don't realize it. So there's everyone with a smartphone, they've all got I squared C in it. You just don't know how to use it. Um, and the typical applications of I squared C are things like accelerometers, um, temperature sensors, um, all the sort of funky little tools, um, you know, little uh, embedded devices that you get these days. Um, they're all I squared C or mostly I squared C. Uh, the reason for that is because I squared C operates on, um, it has, uh, it's very simple to wire up, it has two um, data lines. Um, up here you've got a diagram, you've got VCC, which is um, your power line, then SDA, which is the data line, uh, SCL, which is a clock line, and ground. And so basically what happens is that um, um, it makes a signal on the bus, and I haven't really gotten very much into the low-level um, protocol because it's just not very interesting. but um, what's happened is that it's sort of grown over time and the um, RS-422 has gone away and um, I squared C has come back into fashion. Um, the, one of the things is that because it's just two wires with signals going up and down, um, you don't, it's not really dependent upon one particular voltage. So you can actually use 3.3 volts, 5 volts, um, 12 volts. If you wanted to go higher and use like 70 volts um, so that you could go over a telephone wire, um, you could do that. And if you're talking over, um, it was designed for doing circuit boards like this, like if you've got a, uh, an FM radio, they put the, the radio tuner chip on in one chip and then that would talk to the, the thing that, with the buttons and change the channel on the other. Um, and it, was only, it only started off as a very um, short um, and very small sized bus. But what's happened is that you can slow it down um, to make the distance go longer. And some people are using it um, for like 200 meters. So you, you bring the data bus speed down, you can go for longer, you increase the voltage, it's got all this sort of flexibility. Um, and it is everywhere. Um, right, so you've never heard of um, I squared C and you want to learn about it. Um, the normal places that people would go and learn about I squared C, um, they'd pick up an Arduino or a PIC, and they're those little 8-bit um, CPUs. But I found an interesting thing, and I think I squared C is actually easier under Linux than it is on these little microprocessors. Um, over here we've got a bus, um, on the left hand side we've got a picture of the um, GPIO pinout which is on the Raspberry Pi and um, that's that one there. Um, so you've got all these pins and basically, um, yes it's boring, but on the top hand left side you see that um, there's SDA 
that's the data line, and SCL is the is the clock line, and then you've got some other pins, but basically that's that's where it is, and you can you can wire stuff in if you're brave, um, and uh, do that. Um, a lot of the little mini, a lot of the little embedded um, Linux does, um, computers, they're all coming out with I squared C now. It's on everything. Um, it's on the Beaglebone Black, the Chumbi, the Raspberry Pi, etc. Um, and yes, it is pretty safe to to do it on a pick because you know your chances of breaking anything um, are less. And if you break a you know a one dollar pick, um, it's only a one dollar pick. But if you break a Raspberry Pi, it's fifty dollars. So you might not like that. The interesting thing is that um, I squared C is actually everywhere. And um, I was doing a bit of research on this talk, and I found out that the video connectors, right, um, on every PC actually have um, I squared C in them, and that's how they actually talk to the monitors. So we can actually see that. Oh. Yeah. And we can actually um, so if I do this uh, Now, um, usually on the video, um, I was just checking on the video thing because um, I think I must have broken my notebook or something. But um, I'll go back to my presentation. Sorry about this. I got some corruption in all this um, thing. Okay, so all you need to do to install I squared C on Linux is to type in sudo apt get install i squared c tools. And if you want Python programming, you go, you install Python SM bus. And everything is there and it will install. Then what you do is um, you run this command, which is i squared c detect. And the y is a silly thing, which just basically means yes to everything because it gives you a whole lot of warning screens, and then one is the bus number. And what you get, I can't really show it. It's the same anyway, it's just um, this is halfway through the command. So the, when you do an I squared C detect, um, you get a whole list of different numbered devices. The beauty of I squared C is that you can, it's sort of a hot plug system, so you can plug things in and out, and um, it talks over the um, uh, to a particular chip at a particular address. It's limited to 127 devices, um, but that's actually a lot on a computer. You can get other chips which like do multiplexing and stuff like that. So you can end up with four million or something like that. Um, but the basic command for scanning the bus is I2C detect, and you can just do that from the command line. And most of the time, you can even just on a on a desktop PC. If you do I2C detect minus Y1, um, you'll get the magic number, which is 50. So you can see just third line from the bottom there. It's got 50. 50 is actually the display controller in the um, in the video monitor that it actually talks to. So. How the computer actually works out if there's a monitor there is it's continually trying to get to address 50, and if it can get something then and address 50 answers, it'll give the capabilities of that monitor and the video card will adjust. Um, and what I did the other night is you can actually hook um, um, I squared C devices into your video card. So 
I found an article on the internet which showed me how to make up a little adapter via the VGA card or you know HDMI, it's all the same. So I made myself up a little um, adapter which I've broken already. Um, but you can plug the temperature sensor in to the VGA port and you can read the temperature out of the VGA port. So <laughs> I was telling my friends that and it, it was sort of weird. But um, um, yeah, so it's a, and, and that it costs next to nothing to make. Um, now, when you get to Python, um, you, you can do a lot of the um, I squared C stuff actually from um, the um, command line. And I'll just, I'll just plug this back in. Uh, sorry about this. I lost my terminal. <laughs> okay. Ah, there we go. So I've got, um, I've just run um, the I squared C detect program on the Raspberry Pi and I've got 18. So 18 happens to be a little temperature sensor. So we can change that for something else. And we get a different number, which is 3E. And they've got so many sensors, like um, not only sensors, they've, they've sort of made everything um, with an I squared C bus. Um, you can, the kind of things that you can get, um, you can get um, FM radios, you can get, um, you know, because all the little computers are with FM radios, you can get MP3 players. Um, there's an adaptation of this called um, um, I squared S which is for um, uh, sound, so you can actually transfer sound because it's just a serial um, product, it's just a serial cable. And so a lot of the um, uh, audio devices just use this very simple stuff to um, send MP3s from one chip to the other. Um, and um, there's a whole specification for that. So what we might want to do is we might want to plug back our temperature sensor in. And I'm just going to try to read some bytes from it. So OK. So I'm just trying, um, the Linux command line actually gives you all the tools that you need to, um, so you can actually debug your hardware from the command line, which is sort of neat. Um, and you don't get that sort of capability on the Arduino. So what it's asking for is we need to know the device number and we need to know the bus. So our device number is 18. Um, and it's on bus number one. Uh, okay. And it it doesn't quite look right. What have I done? Chip address. Yeah. 
Anyway, um, it's just a serial device and it gives you a whole lot of bytes. And um, with these I squared C um, chips, there's just one little trick, and that is that um, you give it. They've got a thing called registers, and basically, on every single device, you've got a whole lot of registers. And so, what you need to do is you need to know the register number of the thing that you want to read or write, um, because that actually gives you the functionality. So, if, for example, on the temperature sensor, they've got a particular uh, register that you've got to read to for particular resolutions of data. So, it might be to, um, to, to read it in 16-bit or um, for to read it in 12-bit um, uh, or and then you can write configuration data like they've got watchdog timers and all these different functionalities. So basically, um, there's another variation of this command called I2C set. Do what? Uh, I don't know how to do that. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so you just um, use I2C set and um, so basically this is a, the command line thing and basically you can write out whatever sort of byte you want to the chip and it goes in a particular register and then that sets something. So the sort of neat thing about I2C is that you can actually do a lot of um, debugging from the command line and um, um, that's a pretty um, handy thing. So let's go back to my presentation. Um, so coming back to Python, um, I'm a bit of a Python programmer so forgive this. There are some other languages um, that you can program I squared C in but Python is sort of like basic used to be insofar as it can do everything um, really easily. So in Python what you do is you just got to go in and um, type sudo apt get install uh, python minus smbus and then that gives you this smbus and that's the equivalent of I squared C and I don't know why they call it that but that's just how it is. Um, so I've written a class that just basically um, initializes a little device um, using the address and the port um, that we discovered before. And then for, my, for the temperature sensor, um, this is the Python code that you would actually need to read um, the temperature out. And basically I pass it in um, as the input parameters, the bus number and the device number. And uh, there we go. You see, now that number five, um, what that number five is, is that's the register number. So you need to know that. And so you're going to read three bytes out of register number five. And um, then you do some calculations according to the data sheet and get your value. And all of the devices that you can buy that are I squared C, um, accelerometers, um, motor controllers, um, whatever, they all have, they're all driven with the same sort of logic. It's actually incredibly simple. Um, so over here I've got, um, I made up a, a rotary um, LED thing which I've got different um, lights and I can make it um, go according to the to different things. But basically it uses um, a thing called an IO expander which is that black chip in the centre there. And Philips made a whole lot of different chips. So 
um, basically you can either get um, chips with um, eight, 8 bits on them or 16 bits and that's basically wires to interface in and out of. So this particular expander um, gives 8 bits which gives me 9 LEDs and it's basically rigged up in a way so that you just um, write the value to the um, expander and then you get the appropriate light on. So I'm just um, Um, anyway, I can do that um, in, a, in a minute. Um, this one is the um, radio um, gauge. So this is a similar sort of thing and um, just an example um, of the other kinds of things that you can do. So this is actually an FM radio. So say you wanted to add an FM radio um, to your Raspberry Pi to put it in the car, all you need is this little board and that little board ends up by being about one and a half centimetres by one and a half centimetres. You hook an aerial up, you wire the things to the pins and then you can control it programmatically. So, um, and like I said, there's, um, there's actually hundreds of these little um, I squared C modules um, that are available for um, a, a range of different things. Um, if anybody wants to see it working, I'll do it down the pub. I've, I'm sort of hesitant that I've broken stuff and I don't want to hold um, everybody up. But basically when you write to the bits on the chips, it turns things on. Um, and as simple as that, and you can read temperatures. Um, <laughs> Um, when I had it going the other day, here was my um, little logger. So I was reading the temperature off the sensor and then just using a bit of um, logging to write that into the file. And uh, that's using um, very, very simple code that um, anybody can sort of do in a few minutes. And then I put um, this um, logging data into a JavaScript sort of graphing thing and um, I can get a nice um, graph out of it when I need it. So they're very handy. I squared C is something that um, um, uh, you know you may or may not use but it's sort of um, coming into popularity um, you know for the, a range of different chips and um, that's basically it. Any questions? Um, the bit rate goes between, uh, you can set the clock, right? So, but 400 um, kilohertz is the fastest speed. Um, they've got names like fast um, I squared C and slow I squared C and stuff like that. Yeah. No. On the Raspberry Pi, you can do that by bit banging the actual port. <coughs> you can actually bit bang a GPIO port and pass that into an op amp. Because because the radio is 96 megahertz or something, and the processor speed is 600 megahertz, so you can actually comfortably bit bang. 
um, FM radio <laughs> um, with the processor that's on these things. And software defined radio is, um, yeah, one of the things that you can do. Um, yes, um, but that's more of an electrical thing rather than a, a data thing. So um, um, it's designed, okay, so the length that you can transmit over a cable is an electrical thing. It depends on um, uh, the voltage that you need. So you, if you've got a certain type of cable and a certain kind of distance, um, telephone cables use 70 volts to go from the exchange to the house. Um, so, um, but that's independent because it's just a, um, a data signal. Um, that's independent of the actual protocol. So you can um, you can electrically buffer and um, you know use transistors and signals you know to coax it. Obviously, you can't put seventy volts into the um, um, into the microprocessor. Um, but you can use opto optical isolators and things like that. Um, so um, there's, there's not, um, yeah, there are limits, but there are electrical um, limits. And people just slow it down to make it go fast further. But people in Japan are using it. Um, they um, take standard Ethernet cable. And then um, you chop the uh, the RJ45 connectors off, and then you can use um, uh, because um, twisted pair is usually four line uh, four wires, so it actually maps maps perfectly to I squared C, so you can use one as the data and one as the clock, and one as voltage and and use standard RJ45 cables, but then you've got to slow down the clock. In software, so um, you'd have to um, do some hacking, but apparently it's easy to easy um, to do. You just have to. Yep. Yep. No, no, and they do have um, some things already done. Like they have some um, I squared C extender chips, which bump up the voltage. Like if you go into element fourteen, um, you actually find that they've got some some chips that are already designed to do a lot of this stuff, and you just have to know how to use them. No more questions. No more questions. Let's thank David for the talk. Thank you. As I mentioned earlier,